Tonight we're gonna do a rolled stuffed flank steak recipe and we're gonna smoke it on the Traeger. Stick around. All right guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Todd. Sassy's over in the next room enjoying the Christmas tree. Come in here. Okay, so tonight what we got for you is uh, about a pound and a half of this flank steak. And uh, we're going to take it out, pound it flat. We're gonna stuff it or spread it around with some of Sassy's delicious turkey stuffing that we made uh, last week. This is leftover. Then we're gonna lightly season it. We're gonna roll it up, tie it up, use the Traeger as basically an outdoor oven and deliver some smoke nice and low and slow and maybe toward the end we'll kick it up and sear it. So before we get started folks be sure to subscribe to this channel and we really do appreciate it and if you like what you see make sure you hit that notification bell so you don't miss a thing. All right guys here we go. Um, I know this is going to get a little messy so I'm going to don these uh, gloves here. First thing we're going to do put this into a Ziploc bag all right, and I'm not going to seal the end of it, and you'll see why. Okay, I tell you, this Torx uh, paper towel dispenser is awesome. Um, I'll leave a link on Amazon for it. So anyway, I'm going to take a hammer, uh, dumbbells, whatever you want to use. I'm going to take the uh, smooth end of this little meat tenderizer here, and I'm just going to start pounding it. And the goal being is I want to flatten it out. Um, man, I wish I had a sheet metal press or rollers or something at this point, but uh, the goal is obviously maybe make it third at sides and a little bit thinner. Pounded it into submission as best I could, um, and uh, that's probably about 10 minutes worth of pounding. A little bit more, try not to splatter everything, but uh, we got dogs to eat it up. So, uh, so there we go. So I'm gonna go a long way now. You can see the grain here, somewhat. I've, I've scored it a little bit, but the grain is kind of running this way. So I'm gonna roll it up this way so that when you go to slice it, it's already slicing against the grain. So I'm going to take our stuffing and I'm just going to kind of spread it out a little bit. I'm going to avoid getting all the way to the edges of the meat, but if it does, you know, oh well. There we go. Probably looks like uh, plenty right there. Then I'm going to put some of these pats of butter around here. Butter's always good. And, uh, okay, let me see here. So I'll start melting here. So we're just gonna do it evenly. There we go. Okay, now I went ahead and re-gloved here and um, I'm gonna get some of this uh, butcher's twine ready to go because we're definitely gonna tie it up, but I probably only need uh, maybe three, three or four of these pieces. So, uh, okay, let's go. Let's wrap this baby up. And there we go. Pretty easy, right? Okay. And now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of keep that, uh, that seam right there toward the top. Okay, and I'm going to do that because I don't want uh, juices coming out, anything falling out of the back. So, really simple knot. Nothing special about this knot. It's not a butcher's knot. It's not any kind of special knot. It's just a square knot. Okay, and really this butcher's twine is a little bit grippy, so 
it actually holds knots really well. I think I'm going to do one more here toward the end. I am just going to go with a little bit of avocado oil over the top. Okay. All right. And just a lick more of salt. All right. Now lick more of pepper. There we go. Place it on a pan. There we go. Now if you see here, I'm doing it on a raised little plant pan there, and that's just so that I can get a little bit more of that smoke up under there for no other reason. Um, and uh, not necessarily to get any of the juices or anything, it's just uh, really for more circulation. But I don't want to put it on the trigger rack because I'm expecting possibly a little mess to happen. I don't want to get the trigger too dirty. Okay, and here's the uh, toothpick part. I'm just gonna put a toothpick into each end there and hopefully that'll hold it in. Okay, all there's left to do now is to go outside and get the trigger ready to go. Okay, first thing I'm gonna do is open it up and I'm gonna set it for the smoke setting. And while that comes up to temperature, I'm gonna light the smoke tube right here. Um, the smoke tube's pretty handy. I wanna get some extra smoke on this. So what I'm gonna do, whoops, I am going to fairly gently light this up. Now I'm going to go ahead and set it right here. I know it looks messy, but that's okay. Okay, now the secret to this is you're going to let it burn for about five or ten minutes, and when it's ready to kind of go out on its own, but you got a lot of that, those red hot cherries there, blow it out, stick it in the back. All right, guys, well, that uh, smoke tube and Traeger are coming up there. I just wanted to reintroduce you guys to the meter probe. I have several of these. Uh, this isn't an endorsed or uh, product placement by any means. I left my smart troll rig in my trailer, so it's uh, not worth driving over and getting in, in storage. So I just want to point out that this meter probe, stainless steel, it's, uh, it's a very high-tech device. It comes with a, a uh, app that you download to your smartphone. And then via this transmitter, on the ceramic end and via Bluetooth will give you the temperature of the uh, inside of the meat. Uh, it is wireless. Um, it's not the greatest of range. This is the basic uh, meter. Um, but what it does is it gives you an estimated cooking time, which is really handy. So I'm just going to use one of these and I'm going to bury it right in the middle, kind of at an angle, and kind of judge it beforehand to make sure I'm getting that uh, end tip just toward the center. and. Um, and I'm going to be looking for about a, about a 140 to 145 done this. Okay, as you can see here, that smoke tube is now smoking away really, really nicely now. So I'm going to turn it around now. Since my exhaust is on this side, I'm going to keep it over here on the left side. And the theory that I have is that the smoke will travel toward the exhaust. I think it's a pretty solid theory. So. Um, I'm going to put this all the way over. Uh, I want to make sure that I stay uh, a couple inches from that temperature probe. Um, and uh, so that's okay. So let's go get the meat. All right. Slide that on in. There we go. Now, again, I'm going to take this meter probe. I'm going to kind of look at it. Uh, looks like... I'm going to go for right about there, actually kind of eyeball it here. There we go. Okay. Try to give you guys a better look at this. There we go. Okay. That looks about right. Okay, now I'm gonna close it down. Okay, about 15 minutes later, it finally calculated the cooking temperature. Now, um, it's saying about one hour and 15 minutes. You know, just two minutes ago, it was saying 
one hour and 30 minutes. So it did a correction here. Um, and I'm expecting it to maybe do another correction here and there because, you know, it's a spiral piece of meat with stuffing in there, you know, and you might get these little spikes of temperature run-ups and stuff. Let's see the graph. Now this is a tell-all graph here. Notice over on the left, you got the temperature. That's ambient. Okay, but you got this one right here. That's the uh, meat temperature. You want to see nice gradual there. Don't see no spikes there. You know, these spikes, as bad as they look, they're really not that bad. Um, they really only represent maybe about a 40 to 45 degree shift in temperatures. Really, ideally, if you didn't have a pellet smoker, is that maybe you have a nice even line up there. Uh, pellet smokers tend to jitter up and down and cycle on and off, on and off. Whereas the uh, stick burners, you know, it's all about the operator and you get these giant spikes and stuff like that. Uh, these two dips are actually for me opening the door and taking a peek. And uh, as you can see, it's starting to go down here again. But anyway, so we got about another hour and a half essentially until we're ready to eat. All right, guys, quickly becoming my all time favorite instant read thermometer is this Thermo Pro TP19 device here. Um, folks, another awesome stocking stuffer. So if you've got that barbecue fanatic on your wish list, uh, Santa's list or whatever kind of list you're working with, get them one of these under 30 bucks. I'm going to drop a link down. No thinking about it. Just go hit that link and get you some. Get a few. And I suspect these things are going to last a long time. It's a AAA battery in there. It comes with one. Um, it's a waterproof door on the back, Celsius or Fahrenheit. You could lock in your reading so that you don't burn your tootsies. So go check it out. All right, going in for a quick look. Okay, that smoke tube definitely doing its job. And there's the uh, star of the show right there. It's looking good. Getting a little of that pink smoke color. That's awesome. Got some extra stuffing right there. Probably going to have to take it off. Uh, but uh, there we go. So as you can see, the smoke coming up, traveling over, and exiting. All right. Let's close it back down. All right, guys. I'm not sure who it was, but someone on YouTube told me about this stuff. I can't believe it's not butter spray. It's a little trick. I'm going to spray it on the top of that thing. Yeah, it's going to be good. All right, as you see here, hope you can see that. It's telling me it's ready, so let's go get it. This is skirt steak. It's wrapped up in a spiral. Not a whole lot of reason to let this rest as far as I'm concerned, so I'm just going to go right in. There we go. Yes, look at that. Beautiful thing. Baby, I had my doubts, but I think you're vindicated. All right, guys, I don't think there's anything left to do but to go in for a bite. Okay. So the stuffing doesn't really hold it together. You know, it kind of falls apart, but that's okay. You know, you, people tend to do that anyway, right? Mmm. Oh, yeah. Mmm. I gotta say, sorry to speak with food in my mouth, but oh well. I'm gonna sign off here now. I gotta say, I had my doubts. I didn't think this was a very good idea, but it turned out to be an awesome idea. You can mix this up in all kinds of ways and use all kinds of different stuffings. Cream cheese, kind of peppery stuffings, whatever you want. So anyway, guys, I hope you liked this video. Be sure to subscribe. Meet us up at Patreon under the same name for Barbecue Insider Perks. And we'll see you later.